Um, hi there, uh, Warren Doctor again, and uh, I'm here also speaking with Richard, Professor Richard Toygan at the University of Exeter, and uh, today we're talking about uh, Churchill's greatest books. Uh, today we're covering uh, The River War, uh, and I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about that, Richard. Well, Churchill himself had fought in the British reconquest of the Sudan in 1898. He'd got there with some difficulty. He'd had to pull quite a lot of strings. This was not the first war that he'd fought in. He'd already published a book, The Story of the Malakan Field Force, actually uh, earlier in 1898. So he was somebody who was sort of going around the empire trying to find battles to fight in that he could write up. Uh, but this was a, perhaps a rather different book to the one volume, rather slim story of the Mal Malakan Field Force, because this is a, really a massive two volume history, which is. <laughs> much more of a sort of a serious historical work than it is an account of Churchill as an individual. Right, and I think that that's one of the interesting comparisons with it and the Malacan Field Force is the fact that Churchill does comprehensively try to write a history, including what had happened, the fall of Khartoum, the death of um, Charles Gordon, and the effect that that had on society, thus pulling Britain back into Khartoum, uh, which Churchill was a part of that campaign. Now, this book is, of course, famous for my own uh, research purposes. I use it a lot uh, for, for Churchill's sort of views of Islam. And I was wondering if you had any thoughts on that. Well, I mean, I think it's probably also worth highlighting that this is a very sort of seriously researched book. So there are the, uh, you know, the, the comments and the analysis giving Churchill's own viewpoint, but also this was something where he um, had talked to key individuals and sort of interviewed them and you know, established a lot of documents as well. So um, you know, probably that quotation that you mentioned, very famous, um, which uh, sees so many people to be Islamophobic about Islam being as dangerous in a man as hydrophobia is in a dog, is uh, in a sense um, often not realised the full context in which it, it came. Now that doesn't necessarily um, make it all right, doesn't make it justifiable, but I think one does need to understand uh, you know, the deep background in which he was producing uh, these views. And of course, it is the case uh, that that re did reflect a widely held view amongst many people in Victorian Britain at that time. Of course, and, and you can't, you always have to in include uh, the idea that Churchill is writing to an audience. Uh, which is also sort of uh, noticeable in the Malacan Field Force, is very sort of typical of, of sort of imperial war correspondence writing at the mm -hmm. time anyway, to sort of to garner a sort of um, a view. Um, and I, I also wonder if we could talk a little bit about the fact that this, this was he ed edited heavily after the mm -hmm. year that it came out. Well, I mean, that's, that's interesting because, of course, some of the controver most controversial passages, including some of the, the criticisms of Lord Kitchener, who had led the military campaign, were left out as Churchill reduced this from a sort of a massive two volume work into a more, more manageable one volume work. Now, in a sense, nobody really knows for sure why it was that he did that. Um, uh, you know, was it partly to, obviously partly to save space, but of course he didn't make uh, you know, a selection and a choice of what he was going to include. And so, you know, many many years later in the 1950s, somebody you know, wrote to him um, and asked him, and, and basically by that point he could no longer remember. So we don't <laughs> we don't get it from from the horse's mouth. But of course, what many people have suspected is that as he was trying to make his way as a rising Conservative MP. He actually left some of the more uh, sort of contra con controversial bits out, um, and particularly the criticism of Kitchener, because this was not the sort of thing that a young Tory aspiring candidate ought to be saying. Well, as as Violet Asquith said, this was the moment when Kitchener was uh, enjoying his Roman triumph, and so to criticize him at the height of this was probably politically quite damaging to Churchill, and he was very politically astute. Yes, so we'll, we'll I would that. say that, of course, what he actually did was that, that with the original two volumes, he got Lord Salisbury, the Conservative Prime Minister, to um, you know, sort of a, a approve it, and you know, Salisbury didn't think that there was anything in the two volumes that was, you know, sort of excessively over the top. He didn't say, "Well, I can't, I can't endorse this." Um, so, you know, actually, um, although Churchill was in some ways you know, sort of pushing the limits of what was sayable or what was acceptable, he wasn't actually going sort of wildly out there. And many other people had criticised uh, Kitchener for this um, you know, famous act of the destruction of the Mahdi's tomb as well you know sort of so Queen Victoria herself wasn't all that happy about it so Churchill wasn't perhaps going uh, quite as far out on a limb as, as is sometimes thought. So this has been our discussion of uh, the River War. Um, thank you very much Professor Poy.